I think I've said this before that if I get stuck on trying to come up with a cold open that could put me off filming the entire video so I'm just gonna go start filming and hopefully I'll come up with good bloopers or something for a cold open otherwise this just might be it Greetings one and all and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade coming at you today with episode 3 of Rescue Records this is my occasional series in which I talk about records or CDs or cassettes that I have rescued off of the freebie shelf at House of Records, hence the title Rescue Records. And I actually have two of each of those three formats to talk about today, two records, two cassettes, and two CDs. So let's go ahead and get started. My Rescue Records videos are filled with stuff that usually I probably wouldn't give a chance listening to otherwise. Uh, you know, I mean, how can you beat a price like free when it's sitting right there on the shelf and you take a chance on it? If you don't like it, you haven't spent any of your money or you haven't wasted any of your money. Case in point with this one. Ferrante and Teicher, or Tyker, I'm not, not sure how you pronounce that last name, but uh, this is their album Dial M for Music. That's, you know, my penchant for uh, songs and album titles about music. Kind of, that, that suckered me into this one right here. And yes, they were like the kings of easy listening mu music back in the 60s and 70s, and I think they stretched into the 80s as well. And yes, a bunch of uh, interesting songs on here, uh, selections from movies and TV shows, uh, Great American Songbook Standards, popular hits of the day, uh, all that's on here. One of the more interesting selections, Kane's theme from Kung Fu, the TV show from the, from the 70s. Very interesting track for them to bring on here. They were a piano duo, just in case you didn't know. Yes, piano, with usually with some orchestral backing on it. So yes, uh, very interesting uh, selections on here that uh, that they would put as piano-centric songs. Uh, and let's see, what are the, some of the other ones? Oh, Live and Let Die from the James Bond movie. That's another one that kind of made me scratch my head when I saw it on the track list. Probably the most interesting, the most head-scratching one on here is Let's Get It On, the Marvin Gaye classic. I mean, in my opinion, Marvin Gaye's vocal completely defines that song. If it's not there, the song is just worthless. And it comes close. I mean, Ferrante and Teicher, they are as cheesy as they might be and as cheesy as their music is. They were talented pianists. And so they made the most of it that they could with, with that particular song. And then uh, Yesterday Once More, the Carpenter song is on here. And also um, The Morning After from the Poseidon Adventure. And that was... I'm sure I know who did that song originally, but I can't remember who it is now, now that the camera's rolling. And then the uh, classic song, Tie a Yellow Ribbon Round the Old Oak Tree, is on here also. So yes, I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or not. This is one of those that, as I mentioned, uh, if it wasn't on the freebie shelf, I probably never would have checked it out. So yeah, I might give it one more listen. I'm not out of room on my record shelves, but I'm kind of uh, short enough on space that I'm kind of trying to be picky about what I keep and what I don't. So that one might be uh, getting the heave-ho. Plus, I went to the trouble of cleaning that record, so whoever gets it, I'm going to put it in the Goodwill bag. Probably, I don't think any store is going to want to take it and give me money for it. So whoever picks it up out of uh, Goodwill or the thrift store is going to get a nice, clean record. So you're welcome. Anyway, the other LP here is the one that you saw in the thumbnail, a much more well-known album, A Night at the Opera by Queen. Yes, this was on the freebie shelf at House of Records. And, you know, the, the jacket is could be in much better shape. Uh, there's a gold star on here, which I'm pretty sure was not part of the original cover. Uh, and somebody, somebody just put that on there. And there's a blue uh, marker uh, Sharpie line here on the, on the thing. And plenty of ring wear as well. And the residue from an old price sticker. But the inside of the gatefold is in pretty good condition. And the record was actually in surprisingly good condition. A little bit of surface noise on like the second half of side two. But other than that, no skips. Nothing after I gave it a good cleaning. So, yeah. Uh, so, you know, aesthetic considerations, you know, the record doesn't look very good. You know, it looks worn out. But yeah, as I said, it did not skip. And I had never listened to this album all the way through until I picked it off the freebie shelf. I know. Despite the fact that it's got, you know, of course, their big, big hit, Bohem Bohemian Rhapsody, and also uh, You're My Best Friend, one of their other big hits is on here, and I'll, I've always liked that song, too. And I was kind of surprised at the variation of sounds on this album. Uh, one song, oh, shoot, which one was it? Uh, I think it was 39. It reminded me of the Eagles. You know, that, that, that uh, 
countryish pop sound from the 70s that almost like a laurel canyon sound that one kind of uh, intrigued me i'd never heard that kind of those kind of sounds out of queen before obviously their big hit singles are probably all going to stay in the same genre or close to the same genre because that's what made the band popular so when they branch out like this it's usually buried on the album tracks like with this and a couple of the songs on here what was it seaside rendezvous and was it good company uh, those had kind of a tin pan alley an, a really old kind of old-fashioned kind of sound to them so i was very surprised at the variation of sound as i said on this album so i am going to this is going to be a placeholder uh, you know, I'm going to maybe be on, on the lookout for a better condition copy of this. Uh, but then again, maybe not. As I said, you know, I don't buy records for their condition. As long as they play the music and with minimal surface noise, I'm okay. And this one had just, you know, the surface noise, you could hear it on Bohemian Rhapsody particularly, but it wasn't distracting. So I might just keep this one. And especially when you get it for zero dollars and zero cents, you know, how can you look a gift horse in the mouth in other words so yeah good stuff and then uh i was going to do the cds next but i think i'm going to do the cassettes next just to make the video interesting maybe it doesn't make it very interesting to you but uh, that's to me anyway uh these two and i believe both of these cassettes i found on the freebie shelf at house records as well uh al Jarreau with his album uh breaking away brain fart uh good stuff i've i've listened to a few al Jarreau albums before and uh, yeah, lots of good stuff on here. We're in this love together. That was one of his big hits on this one. And uh, the title track was really good. One of the songs that oh, let's see, um, "Easy" was another one that was really, really catchy, really good. I had never heard that one before. And uh, "Our Love," if I recall correctly, that was another good song. The only real misstep on this album was he does a vocal rendition of "Blue Rondo a la Turk," which he calls "Round, Round, Round." I don't know. It's just that's a song that it has the beat on it is just unusual enough that I don't think a vocal rendition really serves it well. Honestly, it's it's, it's one of those things that uh, Dave Brubeck, I don't know if Dave Brubeck actually composed it, but he had it on his album uh, Time Out, and it's because it had a really unusual time signature. So yeah, that kind of, uh, I don't know, or maybe Al Jarreau, as good as he is, maybe he just wasn't quite the right person to uh, pull off a vocal rendition. So that was the only missed up on this album. Roof Garden was another one that was really, really good on this album. So yeah good stuff I, I and i can't remember i think i have one outro album on lp or or do i have them all on cd or cassette i can't remember anyway that's neither here nor there but pretty good album i gotta say and then this guy i had never heard of before mason ruffner and uh, this one i just picked up last week on the freebie shelf and it turns out he is a rock artist he's a kind of what i like to call the barroom rock subgenre a little bit of blues and a little bit of country just a tiny bit of country mixed in to the rock sound uh plenty of good stuff on here uh this is his sophomore album i believe and uh the song the the, the album is gypsy blood the title track was really good let's see what were some of the other ones dancing on top of the world that one was pretty good uh courage was an instrumental which was pretty dar pretty darn decent and let's see what was some of the other ones under your spell i believe that one was really good and there was another song i can't remember which one it was i think it was baby i don't care no more but um there's probably a musical term for it but when the guitar line the the rhythm guitar follows the vocals exactly you know note for note and you know it there's probably a term for it i'll have to look it up i should have looked it up before i started the camera but you know me and uh, planning ahead anyway my point is i never really care for when songs do that when the an instrumental follows the vocal exactly just, it it seem it strikes me as a uh, lack of imagination. So anyway, moving along to the CDs, and and yes, this is probably going to be a relatively short video, but uh, yeah, there's when there's not much to a video, you kind of have to make it short, otherwise it's going to be boring, right? Anyway, we have Moby with his album 18, and I had never really paid a whole lot of attention to Moby. The one song that I really liked of his was "We Are All Made of Stars," and that is the opening track on this album. But I'd never actually listened to the album before. I think I picked up a singles collection of his, and for some reason I didn't like any of the other songs nearly as much as I liked We Are All Made of Stars, so I ended up getting rid of it. If I'm even remembered correctly, I can't remember. But anyway, I was surprised at the, um, again, the kind of the variations on sound and the sonic textures on this album. They were, you know, just kind of all over the place. There were some instrumentals, there were some, you know, light stuff, some more beat heavy stuff. 
and all sorts of things. So yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to checking out more of Moby. I, I think I'm going to check out his album Play next. Uh, but and, and this one's a little bit scratched up, so I'm thinking this is going to be a placeholder for uh, for when I find a better condition copy of the album, because now that I've heard it all the way through, it's one that I am very much considering actually paying money for. Yes, I have been so lucky getting so many of the records and CDs and tapes that I found for absolutely no money. And uh, case in point with this one, this is a genre that I am almost completely unfamiliar with. It is Zydeco music. And uh, who else are you going to start with with Zydeco than the master, Buckwheat Zydeco. This is an ultimate collection, a compilation of his. And I have to say, I was, uh, uh, I had a good time with a CD, let's put it that way. This is kind of a party CD. Uh, Zydeco is one of those genres that I kind of have to be in the mood for. It's fun, but uh, it can be a little bit, uh, the, the energy can be a little bit annoying if you're not quite ready for it, which I suppose, I suppose any genre, if you're not really in the mood for it, can be, you know, if you're not in, in the mood for it, you're not in the mood for it, and it's not going to sound good. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I had a lot of fun with the CD, lots of fun, amusing tunes on it, and I... I like and sort of know the French language, and a lot of the Cajun stuff is in a, a kind of a, a French dialect, so I kind of appreciated that in a lot of these songs. So, yeah, if you've uh, if you've never checked out Buckwheat Zydeco and you're not afraid to, you know, stretch your comfort zone with uh, regard to the different genres you might be willing to listen to, check out Buckwheat Zydeco. I mean, I, I don't think there is a better or or more highly regarded Zydeco musician out there, past or present. So, good stuff. Well, that didn't take too long, did it? I guess this is probably going to be a short video, isn't it? But anyway, that'll do it for Rescue Records Episode 3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends, and give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.